Hello everybody, welcome to Kill Your Inner Loser channel. This is going to be the second part of me scraping through comments to answer a few of the questions that were left and specifically aimed at me personally. And hopefully Andy's put this in the right order and this one goes second. I am Cameron, if you don't know who I am, I'm Andy's co-coach in his program. Some of you may be familiar with me already. Let's get into these questions. Only a couple. Uh, one of them is quite a big one. So first one, first one's from Kelly K Combination. I've seen you on the channel, like posting comments before. Lovely to have you here. He asks what the mindset was that helped you give yourself, oh, fuck me, I fucked that up. What's the mindset thought that helped you give yourself permission to do what you want? I've been back at uni for a while now, so younger guy, I guess. And he made it a point to meet more people, try to hit on more girls while I was there. But I noticed a lot of my resistance comes to the idea of hitting on more girls. But I noticed a lot of my resistance to the idea of hitting on more girls comes from the idea that I'll gain a reputation. A couple of things there. Okay, giving yourself permission to do what you want. Now, I don't know what Andy's journey towards this was like, but I think, he, I, I'm fairly certain he had a similar situation to me where he reached an absolute breakdown moment which led into a I don't give a fuck fuck this I'm going to do what I need to do moment and that's not the most positive way to approach this or positive way to arrive at giving yourself permission to do what you want but it does seem to be quite a common pattern that you know a lot of guys who come to this stuff were just innately dissatisfied with what they were getting before they were innately dissatisfied with looking around and at least perceiving that a lot of that like everyone else was getting what we wanted and we we just felt like we just didn't have maybe we didn't have the balls like i was very hard on myself from a oh you're a pussy you're not doing anything you don't have the balls to go and get what you want and i think i just i said that to myself so much that it caused me to have after you know after just failing and failing to specifically around girls to get with girls and then watching specific i had a situation where i lived in hostels for like quite a while in australia and I would just watch my, the girls I failed to get with would then go and get with people that I knew and specifically friends. And that's what triggered the breakdown with women. It was just this idea of like, I'm not getting anything and I'm watching all these guys get stuff. And I had a, like the full on breakdown. And at that point I knew about Andy. So I just, you know, I said, fuck it. I'd reached the fuck it moment. I would rather go and get what I want than live the life of quiet desperation. Isn't that the, is it the Henry David Thoreau quote? Is it, it must, is it Henry David Thoreau? Who is it the quiet desperation quote? Like good looking, good looking loser called it, um, uh, was it comfortable discomfort or something like that? Um, God, I'm messing up all these quotes. But yeah, basically uh, this, just this general idea of that's not good enough. And I think it has you, the kinds of guys that come to our community are the guys who aren't going to accept the, the average and are going to accept less. They can't make peace with it. And we would tell guys now, like, you can definitely make peace with what you get, but we want you guys to find, like, you know, meaning in your goals and having the sacred, the sacredness of your goals. So we're going to help you, like, achieve whatever you want to achieve. But you can be at peace with it. You can enjoy it a little bit more. You can enjoy the process without having this innate crushing idea that you need to achieve everything. Um, I need to get back to the actual question now. But, you know, giving yourself permission to do what you want Can you just like force yourself to take the action towards what you want? Could you do that? If you say, hey, I want to be, I want to start a business. Can you just ignore for like one day the voices that tell you no and go and set up that business? Can you take that first step? It's not about immediately being amazing at going after what you want. It's about taking those first steps and like just doing the action regardless of not having the permission. Like you don't have to give yourself permission for everything. You don't have to give yourself permission to be a billionaire. Do you know what I mean? You might want it. You might want that level of power and money, but you don't have to give yourself permission immediately. You just have to give yourself permission to admit it, you know, admit it to other people, admit that you want to be incredibly wealthy. Maybe you can start, uh, what's a good example? The first thing I ever did for my business was set up ConvertKit. So I had an email list. So I was going to build a, a guide, a free guide, uh, it's quite outdated now, but like a free style guide for how to dress. And then I made that, I put it on ConvertKit. I had a web, Andy helped me put up a website. So I did quite a few things that went on here. But ConvertKit was like the main thing I remember going for first because it was like, 
I, I barely needed a website. You just needed like a WordPress, like one page, which then you can put the convert link on, convert kit link on, and you can just click it and someone can get your email. Uh, you take their email, they get the guide. And that is, that was like my first baby step into business that I ever took. Uh, the other one was like setting up a YouTube channel, which I don't post on anymore, like a defunct history-based YouTube channel. Um, that was a good one. Uh, I guess going to see Andy and paying him for dating coaching, starting the AA program. Like I went originally when I was like 20, 21, was when I first started the AA program. I think that was a big moment. Just being like, I know I want girls. I know I want to get laid. This is something that's going to help me get to girls. I'm going to do this. Uh, some other stuff. I guess setting up online dating for some guys when they first do it and they first start sending messages. Just recognize these first small steps on your journey. Are you giving yourself, are giving yourself permission to do what you want and take them like just, just jump the fucking wall to take them. That would be what I would, that would be what I would say. Now, specifically, you, you're talking more about, uh, I think, approach anxiety in an area where you might gain a reputation. Um, yeah, this is what I mean. Like, so you've taken the first steps, you already approach, you know, you have, I assume you're already approaching based on this, what you're saying here. So it's like, once you've taken those first baby steps, it's just like, you know, taking increasing steps. And in this situation here, yeah, the reputation thing's an interesting one because I'm not gonna sit here and tell guys that like, you'll never gain a reputation, but there's like, there's actually benefits to sort of having the reputation. And it's about becoming comfortable with a guy who might be seen. Andy has a really, like an old article, but it's a really good article called Getting Laid Requires Being Creepy. And he doesn't mean act in a way that's intentionally creepy. Your intent is not, I'm gonna be creepy. But your intent is I'm going to get laid. And some people are going to view that as creepy. Like it's more about being at peace with being seen as creepy. And to become being at peace with being seen as creepy, you have to have a couple of people think you're creepy. Like it's exposure therapy in the same way that approach anxiety, the approach anxiety program and doing approaches is exposure therapy to the fear and getting rejected. Like you get exposure therapy to being rejected. You sort of need a bit of exposure therapy to recognizing that having kind of that reputation isn't the end of the world. Uh, it can be, there can be negatives every now and again, but it's just not the end of the world. I also think on big enough campuses, it's just a practical point of view. It's hard to get a full on reputation on these big campuses unless you're really putting in numbers. Now we have had guys, I know guys from the forum days and stuff who got banned from campuses by security because they got reported for approaching and stuff like that. And like, yeah, if you really put in numbers, but maybe it's just about not putting in insane numbers um, and having like a, a little bit of social awareness, um, you know, not just like spam approaching like three girls within earshot of each other. Just like, you know what I mean? Like there's there's definitely like a level to it that does go a bit too far. We've seen some people are like advising just insane approach numbers. And yeah, numbers get, we always push numbers game, but you can definitely just not do it in a way that like is going to, draw massive attention and get you banned from campus areas. You know what I mean? Just a bit of just using a bit of like, I don't want to say the word common sense. Whenever people use common sense, it's like, no, explain what you mean. Like what I mean is you don't do things in a way that's fucking like excessive and like obviously going to trigger like people's concern, like especially like security people's concern and like have girls running off to like complain to like the people who run the campus. So there's definitely like like ways you can be a bit more careful about it. But in terms of like, if you go out and approach like, if you go across a university campus and approach like five girls, that's not gonna really, like at the end of the day, that's just not gonna come back to you. Um, and like lots of the guys I knew who got laid at university had the reputation of talking to lots of girls. That's the other big fucking elephant in the room. That's what I meant earlier when I said the reputation doesn't really harm you as much as you think it does. Every I knew guys who got 100 lay counts in their first like year or two at university or college, or at least they claimed they did. And like, if you saw them on the night out, they were just <laughs> bouncing. They would approach, like, I'd see them approach like 20 girls in a night and all the girls would know of him. And all the girls would know he's the guy that like tries to get like, tries to get with you. And he still got laid a fucking ton, despite the reputation. The reputation can help. It's why we, um, you know, encourage guys to dress a bit like fuckboys. Encourage guys, because the, the, the subcommunication of you look like a fuckboy also makes you like 
you know, a prospect for a girl that wants to get laid that night. A girl who's like, oh yeah, I really want to get laid tonight. That guy looks like a dirty fuck boy. I'm going to go for him. Dirty as in like, you're into dirty shit, not that you have an STI. Do you know what I mean? There is like, there is benefits to this. Becoming the hot guy, that becoming the fuck boy, becoming the guy who like is a sexual person has benefits to it. But I get what you mean when you say reputation. You mean like, and you know, can say becoming a safety concern for people on campus. As well as like day game, like night game is actually safer to some degree. Like you get kicked out by a bouncer if you're like, you takes a lot to get kicked out of a bouncer for like, if you're like, I guess if you're like, we had a guy, I was in Vegas uh, hanging out in a hostel when I was like 24, 25, just tripping around America for the first time. And there was a guy from Saudi Arabia in the hostel. So we all went out with a load of us, a bunch of Australians, uh, a bunch of Americans and this Saudi Arabian guy. And he thought it was okay to just grab girls by the hair in clubs. I don't, not even joking. He would just grab girls by the hair. And like, yeah, he got, we, we like, we're in this club. Suddenly he was just gone. And we came outside to just him surrounded by like five security guards. So like, yeah, you can get away with a lot more, but there's still a line in the nightclubs. There's still like a line you don't cross. You know what I mean? Where the bouncers will come after you. But like just talking to girls and trying to get with them, in a club, you know, it's way more acceptable. There's alcohol flying around. People are people are trying to get laid. Like that's that's what I like. That's what I love about college and university. I guess if you're in America, that's not so easy. Um, so yeah, go to parties instead. House parties. House parties are better than clubs. There you go. Try and get invited to some house parties. My number one trip for you, Kelly K combination, is gain a reputation for being a slut at house parties. That's what I'm going to tell you to do. Anyone's got any questions for me? Just leave them in the comments of this video or the one before, and I'll get around to them. Dude says, it was interesting to hear thoughts on Manchester as that's where he lives. He wants to hear my thoughts on Manchester and I'll do UK generally. So Manny's a good city. Uh, Manny is walkable and there's a lot, I think as you said here, there's a lot of like foreign girls, a lot of Eastern European girls there. And typically I, I prefer dating foreigners in the UK to dating the locals. Um, that has, I have reasons for this. I, I just don't, I guess I got tired of dating English girls in both Australia and England. So like, I just don't have, and I might go back around because I have been dating exclusively foreign girls for a while now. So maybe at some point the freshness will come back. Typically I find foreign girls more, just more interesting uh, and generally more attractive. I don't know what it is about the, the standard English look, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't thrill me in the same way that like, like, I guess the for, like foreign looking girls, like South, South European girls, like, you know, Italian, Greek, um, maybe Eastern Europeans, but like, I also have a bit of issues. I don't date many Eastern Europeans either because they tend to be quite dry people. Um, my favorite girls to date typically are South American, Latinas, Mexicans. Um, I like Americans as well. I don't really like Canadians, even though I live in Vancouver, but I'll, I will keep an open mind. Like I'm very open-minded. Uh, it's just that there are recurring patterns sometimes across nationalities. When it comes to the UK, Manchester ranks fairly highly. I've lived across, I've lived in Nottingham, the UK. Sorry, I've lived in Nottingham. I've lived in London. I've lived in Manchester. It was like the three main cities I've lived in. Nottingham was fine. I was at college though, a little bit of a different experience when you're like university college in terms of your dating life. Uh, Manchester and L London's amazing. London is the best city in the UK by like a mile for dating. Due to the option, not just due to the options of girls and like how many girls there are there, but also due to just like, the options for dating itself. Uh, so like all the, and all the concentration of the hottest girls you're gonna find in the UK will be in London. And if you like foreign girls, you're gonna find more of them in London. So it's like, it's like London is so far ahead of every other city in the UK. It's kind of difficult to recommend anywhere else. That's like the problem. And a lot of the other cities I would recommend based on livability more than dating. So I find the livability of Manchester really high, the livability of Nottingham really high, the livability of London is you know bad because it's so, like the price difference is crazy um, just for like a one bed flat. So, and you want to be able to afford like a one bed or a studio or something if you're gonna you know, go really hard on the date, on dating for a while. Um, so I probably would, it actually makes a decent argument for not, date, not living in London for the dating benefits just because of how like for a younger guy, it's just very hard to like make it there and not be working 100% of the time. So I actually think Manny, as a shout to someone who is like, if you're UK based, I would situate yourself like the center of a city like Manchester or Leeds or Nottingham, or um, 
I don't really like Bristol, but Bristol has a good reputation, but mostly amongst like, younger kids, I guess. Um, Liverpool, I don't rate that much. Uh, Birmingham, eh, no. Uh, it would be it would be between like Manchester, Nottingham. We got a, we got a guy who just moved to Nottingham. He's really enjoying it. Leeds, I love Leeds as a city as well. Are there anything else? Sheffield, I heard good things about Sheffield uh, as like a, especially for like nightlife. I think if you like nightlife, the UK is very strong generally. If you're someone who's into the night scene, night game stuff. I actually think if you're into that, you won't be online looking for like get laid advice. I think it's actually a really good, I think the UK, like getting laid on nights out in the UK is like pretty consistently easy. So yeah, it's one of those things where don't necessarily set yourself up in the UK in London, but just because it's the best place for girls, set yourself up in a city where you can set your logistics at an achievable price. Because in London, you're probably going to be in like a house of like six people or like sharing a flat between three or something like that, like I was, just so you can afford it. So that'd be my case. So yeah, Manchester, he just said, this is all going back to saying that Manchester is actually a pretty good city uh, in terms, just don't go outside of, um, I guess, I guess live centrally. I lived just inside Salford, just north of the, uh, just south of the river, I think. Is that south of the river? Yeah, south of the river just outside the city center, just inside Salford as well. And it was a fantastic place because I could date in the city center and it was like a 20 minute walk back to my place. I had like perfect logistic, perfect logistics. Um, yeah, I recommend, I yeah. Anyone in the UK, I recommend Manny, good place. I was yeah during COVID as well. And like with COVID going on, it was actually pretty good. As I said, you have any comments or questions, leave them down here. I'll do more videos, rounding them up later on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out the coaching stuff down below. We also have video courses, but if you want the best hands-on hardcore help, come to our coaching program. Andy does introductory calls. Check out those as well. Peace.